All right, so I analyzed 1,600 interior designer job postings, so you don't have to, just to find out what the most in-demand software skills are for interior designers as of right now. So if you're a designer, a student, or a job hunter, this video is for you. So this video is a little different from my typical YouTube videos of just screen share and tutorials, but I did want to share this information because I did this research just to make sure I was still as up to date as possible with the wider industry. So what are we going to cover? First, we're going to cover the five most requested softwares within these job listings. Then we're going to just go through the full top 10 of any mentioned programs. Then we're going to break it down by which software is preferred in various countries or regions, what the different job levels require. So what's something for more of a junior designer versus mid-level versus senior? how salaries were impacted from the software demands within the job listings, and where all this data came from. All right, let's dive in. All right, so we're gonna count down from the five most requested softwares from these job listings. Number five was InDesign. So InDesign had 283 mentions. So this is obviously used for presentation boards, proposals, mood boards, reports, anything like that. It's definitely more common in more senior roles or anyone involved in visualization and kind of those final deliverables to the client. So if you're focusing on client presentations and high-end proposals, InDesign is definitely a plus. At number four, we have Photoshop with 404 mentions. So Photoshop's gonna be used for concept boards, furniture boards, color correction on photos and just a whole lot of nitty gritty stuff. So Photoshop was actually required across all levels from those really junior, more intern level positions as well as the senior ones. Obviously interior designers are not using Photoshop like photographers would or even professional visualizers would, but it is a really handy software to have in your toolkit. And so it did get mentioned a lot in these job listings. Number three is SketchUp with 460 mentions. So SketchUp just seems to be the go-to for quick 3D visualization. It was definitely more prominent in any freelance roles or any of those mid-weight or mid-level designer positions. So if you're working conceptually or as a freelancer, it turns out, SketchUp is definitely a great tool because it's relatively easy to learn and is widely used for these early stage models. Number two is Revit, another one of my favorites with 617 mentions. So Revit dominates interior design positions at architecture firms or BIM heavy studios. So Revit is definitely an essential skill for those high paying designer jobs for large commercial scale projects. So Revit is just huge in commercial design and large firms. It's not just for architects. So if you wanna work in a more structured BIM heavy environment, Learning Revit can really open doors. I know from personal experience, because learning Revit actually opened a lot of doors for me, both in the design world and in the academic world. Number one is my favorite, no surprise here, it's AutoCAD with 707 mentions. So it was the most requested software across all listings, meaning it's still that industry standard for technical drawing and documentation. AutoCAD remains the backbone for so many technical skills within interior design. You import AutoCAD drawings into SketchUp files. You import AutoCAD drawings into Revit files as you get started. There are so many ways where AutoCAD is kind of that foundational piece when it comes to software. So if you're an interior designer, knowing AutoCAD can be a really valuable skill, even if you're using other tools alongside it. All right, so those are our top five. Now let's see what other softwares were mentioned within the job listing. So I'm gonna only look at the, the overall top 10. So we know the top five, let's look at number six. So number six was Rhino, so Rhinoceros 3D. So this is really popular for 3D modeling and more parametric modeling. Um, it can be for high level concepts and things like that. So it's gonna be used in really big firms that are working in really conceptual ways, algorithmic ways, things like that. Number seven was 3ds Max. So 3ds Max is more of an advanced rendering tool. It's from Autodesk. Uh, it's often paired with things like V-Ray and it's for those really hyper-realistic visualizations. Number eight is Enscape. Uh, Enscape is actually my renderer of choice. I think it works really well with both SketchUp and Revit and it's a little bit more user-friendly than V-Ray in my opinion. And it is helpful for just kind of those quick visualizations that have a little bit more character and nuance than something straight from the original product. 
Number nine is Vectorworks. So this is one of those softwares that I think is really popular in European countries. So I know it's really popular here in the UK as well as in other parts of Europe. Um, and it's kind of its own little BIM software. It works similar to a little bit of CAD and a little bit of Revit at the same time, um, but it can be a really valuable skill if you're working within the regions where it's really popular. And number 10, is Bluebeam. So Bluebeam isn't actually a design software, it's a markup software. So basically this means you can open up a PDF and start adding in annotations and changes things and check things and basically just the things that we used to do with like a red pen on a printed copy of a drawing, you can now do digitally with the software like Bluebeam. I know looking at drawings with my higher education students using Bluebeam was really helpful to be able to like point at things and make comments and write them out and really make sure it's really clear and easy to understand any changes that I would suggest for a drawing. So if you're looking to up-level your skills for job hunting, these are some additional softwares that can be helpful. If I was having to choose, I would say Enscape and Bluebeam are gonna be the most bang for your buck because Bluebeam is actually really easy to learn and Enscape is fairly user-friendly to learn and it gives you some really nice visuals at the same time, as well as being compatible with different softwares. So now let's break this down by location. So does location even matter with software? Absolutely it does. I have taught hundreds of students around the world, both in higher education, as well as serving students in my AutoCAD course and AutoCAD templates and things like that. And essentially, there are preferences depending on the region of the world that where you work. For example, in Australia, Revit was king. So learning Revit, if you're gonna be working in Australia, becomes a really important task in order to make sure you remain competitive, especially if you're working on commercial design projects. So if you're in Canada, AutoCAD remains king, but Revit and SketchUp are actually easing up and getting closer to that kind of request. Now, if you're in the United States, AutoCAD completely dominates. Now, there's definitely some requests for SketchUp and Revit. It ultimately depends on the type of firm or design studio that you're looking to work for, but AutoCAD was that number one software requested across the United States job postings for interior design. Now, in the United Kingdom, AutoCAD was the most requested, but SketchUp also had a really high presence. And there was actually a lot more mentions of things like Photoshop and InDesign as well. In Europe more broadly, Vectorworks and Rhino were mentioned. And again, this is likely just due to regional industry preferences. All that to say, if you're targeting jobs in a specific area, make sure you understand the software requirements in those areas. So let's look at it by job level or job role. So not all roles require all tools, and it's definitely important to kind of keep that in mind. So let's break this down. For interns or entry-level positions, Revit and AutoCAD were the top mentions, SketchUp with a close follow. SketchUp also appeared quite frequently for more conceptual work. For mid-level designers, SketchUp was mentioned more frequently. This is likely due to the fact that they're gonna have more of a role in developing the design as it moves through the design process. And SketchUp can be so good for concepts and develop developments and quick 3D visualization. For mid-level positions, Photoshop and InDesign also were mentioned more. Again, this is likely because they're gonna be a little bit more involved in client-facing presentations and, and proposals. So for senior designers and managers, Revit or more BIM software became more crucial, although I'd be tempted to say it's more about knowing how it works and how the, all the project comes together rather than kind of the, the bits and pieces of individual tasks in those software. You're also gonna see less things to do with Photoshop or InDesign because those kind of tasks would likely be delegated at that level. So let's look at this by salary. Now I will say not all of these job postings advertise the salary. So I did look at the ones that did though. Higher salaries, so this is like 70,000 and above, these definitely mentioned Revit and BIM software quite a bit. And there was again less mentions of Photoshop and InDesign because those tasks would likely be delegated to more, more junior designers. So things that are more entry level or hourly rates, things like AutoCAD and SketchUp were most common. And again, it seemed like a lot of contract based positions. So like freelance positions really focused on SketchUp. All right, so where did all this data come from? I looked at 1,608 listings for interior designer on LinkedIn. So these job postings were taken from the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, uh, I think Singapore, the European Union, and a few other locations. Because of that, I wanted to add in a few caveats. So some regions are using LinkedIn to advertise jobs much more so than others. So this might not be a perfect reflection of the global industry. 
Also, various firm types, so boutique firms or really small studios, might not be using LinkedIn at all to advertise roles. They might be relying on more word of mouth or kind of, or more in-person relationships. So definitely conduct your own research depending on the type of role you're looking for. So what does this all mean to you? Well, if you're job hunting, I hope it gives you an idea of the various software that you can add to your CV or your resume to really make yourself more competitive depending on the role you're looking for. But what if you're not job hunting? So maybe you're already working for yourself or you're freelancing, own your own studio, all these types of things. I still think it's really important to keep tabs on the wider industry standards. So if your clients are expecting certain deliverables from your competitors who are using certain software, I think that's really good information to know to make sure you keep yourself competitive. And quite honestly, whether you're job hunting or not, keeping your skills in line with these broader industry standards just gives you more options down the line because you never know what's gonna happen. Now, obviously I'm a big believer in tackling your fears and building software skills because they can really open doors when it comes to design roles. If you're interested, I do have an AutoCAD for interior designers course and a SketchUp for interior designers course, which I'll link below in the description. So comment below, did this video give you any surprises or was everything pretty much as you expected? And I know this video is a little bit different from my typical YouTube videos of screen share tutorials, but let me know if you'd like to see more of this in the future. And as always, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe so you know whenever I release new videos in the future. Thanks for watching.